Let's talk about electrostatic discharge, or ESD. Now, ESD is your worst enemy as a PC technician. You need to know about what it is and how to mitigate its effects. Now, ESD is all about static electricity. Now, a static electrical charge is created whenever you have two objects that come together and, con and come in contact and then are separated. Upon separation, the atoms of one of the objects can steal electrons from the other object. And when it does that, it becomes negatively charged. Now, the other object that gave up the electrons to the other object becomes positively charged. Now, an electrostatic discharge occurs when two objects come together that have different charge levels. If we have one object that has a really high positive charge and another object that has a really high negative charge, the charge from the object with the higher electrical potential flows or jumps to the object with the lower potential. The result, you see and hear a shock. As a PC tech, you need to understand that a computer component, such as a memory chip or a CPU, can be damaged by an electrostatic discharge as small as 100 volts or less. Now, when you, when you hear that 100 volts, well, that sounds like a lot of current, right? We're used to dealing with ball current that runs at 110 volts or DC current inside the PC that runs at 12, 5, or 3.3 volts. And 100 volts sounds like a lot. Well, when we're talking about ESD, you need to understand that an ESD discharge must be about 3,000 volts before you can see it or feel it. So when you go out and you touch that doorknob and you get a shock, you're dealing with at least 3,000 volts. What that means is you could be working on a PC system and be shocking the daylights out of the components in there and you don't know it because the discharge is so small you can't see or feel it, but it's enough to hurt the components. Now I've had this happen to me before. I was working on a PC system. I didn't take the appropriate steps to protect myself. I had a video card in this particular case. And it was just, it worked when I took it out, and when I put it back in, it worked very flaky. It would operate for a while and then just quit, or it would do strange things. Well, I figured out after a while that I must have had an electrostatic discharge occur that damaged the components, and I didn't realize it. ESD is bad, and there are a number of steps you can take to reduce the risk of ESD when you're working on a PC system. Really important that you do that. Number one, you need to discharge yourself before you touch any PC component. There's a lot of different ways you can do that. The easiest way is to simply touch the case frame of the PC system. When you do that, any electrical potential, different difference in potential that may have existed between you and the case is immediately discharged. You can also use what's called a static mat that allows you to equalize again that electrical potential between you and the PC system. You can also use static floor mats or even static floor materials. Now static floor mat is designed to keep you in balance with the electrical potential of everything around you. If you've ever walked through a carpeted room in socks, for instance, you know that you build up a really bad electrical charge. When we use static floor mats or static floor, flooring material, that charge never builds up, and any charge that you may have is immediately dissipated through the mat or through the floor. Another thing, whenever you are handling an electrical component out of the computer, such as maybe a memory chip or a CPU, don't touch the gold or silver leads on the bottom of the component, or even an expansion board card where you have little tab connectors. Don't touch those. The reason is, is if a static discharge occurs and it goes through those leads, it just went right into the heart of that component and probably fried something. So don't touch the leads. In addition, you should store your components in what's called static shielded bags. If you've ever bought a computer part from a computer store before, you've probably noticed that the part came in a gray bag. That's called a static shielded bag. It's got an additional layer built into it underneath the plastic that absorbs electrical discharges as they occur and dissipates them around the component instead of letting them go through and hurting the component themselves. If you ever purchase a part and it comes in a gray bag, that is a static shielded bag. That's what you want. If you get a part that comes in a pink or bluish bag, those are static resistant bags. 
And if you see that kind of a bag, be extra careful because they don't provide the same level of protection against ESD that a static shielded bag does. Another thing you need to do is make sure you keep your work area free of materials that can cause static charges. Two of the key culprits are plastic and styrofoam. These, these two substances can build up a great deal of electrical charge in you and subsequently shock your components. I'm going to tell you a little story. About 10 years ago, I worked for a manufacturer that built memory chips for PC computers. And along the line, we were noticing a high rate of failure at a particular point in the process. And we did this huge department-wide study trying to figure out what it was that was causing these failures because, man, th those folks were static savvy. They had static floor mats. They had static floors. They had static work, free work areas. Everything was designed. We had static free smocks that we wore to dissipate charges. And with all those protections, we were still having failures and we couldn't figure out why. After doing a lot of research, we found out the reason. The problem was is that a lot of the people who worked along the line that were processing and working with memory chips were drinking coffee using styrofoam um, cups. And the process of lifting up a cup, taking a drink, and putting it back down was enough to build up a little bit of a static charge. And as the day went on, they kept lifting the cup, they built up more and more of a charge and were causing some failures to happen. Okay? So keep plastic and styrofoam away from your work area as much as possible. The last thing you need to keep in mind is that humidity is your friend when dealing with electrostatic discharge. The reason is, is that the higher the humidity is, the harder it is for an electrostatic discharge to occur. The humidity in the air acts as a resistor. It doesn't allow current through it as easily as regular um, dehumidified air. To keep static down, you should keep, if possible, the humidity in your work area relatively high at about 70% or higher. Electrostatic discharge can be a really nasty enemy. The problem is, is that when it happens, you don't know it happened, and you can't figure out why a particular component isn't working the way it's supposed to. In order to keep electrostatic discharges from happening, you need to make sure that you use static prevention measures, such as a static mat, such as a higher humidity, and keeping away um, substances that cause static charges, such as styrofoam and plaque.